Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Let Me Finish, uh, episode four. This is your boy, Dom. This is Greg. And this is Antonio. No, nah, that doesn't sound right. But oh, gosh. <laughs> again? <laughs> I tried to bring it back, but I wasn't prepared. Just, so. We need you to make up your mind on, on what you decide to call yourself. No, not what, how you decide to say it. Yeah, let's just stick to Antonio because... It just works better. But it's always like the spur of the moment thing. Like, I feel like you don't like pre-plan this. It's no. just like you're in the moment and you're like, let me try something different, you know? And then we're here to say like, don't do that again. <laughs> Nothing in my life is planned, so. And then you do like this awkward pause before you actually say it. <laughs> yeah, like so, you're so. trying to channel like <laughs> South America or something. <laughs> Quick story. As a child, I had a bad stutter. So the pause is to kind of like stop, process, think, but that was kind of spurred a moment. So interesting. Did you, you know, I had a lisp and um, I, I went to speech therapy for it. Did you ever go to speech therapy? Oh my gosh, it? did we all three go to speech class? Yes. Oh, oh wow. My goodness. <laughs> oh wow. This was, this was is that why we're me? like trauma bonded? I guess so. And we didn't even know. And here we are on a podcast. Here and we, we got to this like within five minutes of the episode. Like we could just end it right now. <laughs> <laughs> right through, done. <laughs> No, I was in speech from like third grade to like fifth, fourth, yeah, fourth, fifth grade. I was I was in there for for a while, and I just loved it because I got to get out of class and <laughs> and go to speech. But it was cool. Yeah, well, I, I'm glad we overcame all of our uh, deficiencies of speech. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I do be listening back to this, like you have a lisp still. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we are embracing it. Okay, exactly. <laughs> Talk about our weekends. Who wants to kick things off? Okay, honestly, I was being selfish. The reason I want to talk about my weekend is because I ended my weekend with a new job. Yeah. So, thank you for me. Um, I put in my two weeks notice at my job yesterday, and it took them like a day to respond to it. Um, I'm going to finish out my work week, but I'm excited about the opportunity because it's something that um, <clears throat> I've been doing for the last couple of years. Something I'm actually passionate about and I've put a lot of work into. So to actually get a salary position for something I love doing and something I work hard towards, I'm really excited about it. And I can't wait to have a week off from work because I never have time off. So Oh, yeah. man. That's yeah, so that's nice. Be really nice. For real, for real. Nothing's better than that, like buffer week that you take off between an old job and a new job where yep. you're just like because yep. I've never had it I'm and all you're thinking about is like the potential of the new job you know yep. you're not the reality of like the day to day it kind of sucks no. I mean it's not going to suck but every job sucks yeah, some it's right. moments, but. so you're just like I'm a new person I'm going to become a yeah. new person but it's also just having that downtime to prepare yeah. for the new job and like cause my last this last job I took I literally worked up until the day I flew out for training for my new job. So I had zero downtime. So, mm -mm. And I adamantly told them, I put in a two weeks notice. I said, I'll be here for two weeks. And then I said, honestly, Friday's my last day. I'm, I'm not doing two weeks. And what they say? I mean, what can they say? Yeah, you know, yeah you're right. True. You know, so, yeah. The thing is, yeah, I'm in sales. So I would never give a two weeks notice. Because immediately you're... They'll fire you, they'll cut you, or they'll keep you for two weeks and make your life live in hell. Yep. So I'll do it during the week, and then I'll say, I'm leaving Friday. You know, I'm leaving yeah. tomorrow. Because it's like, somebody's going to be able to replace me at sales. You know? I think if I was to ever leave my job, I definitely would put in a two-week notice because I always do it. But I don't think I would work the whole two weeks listening to you you both. Because every time I have put in a two-week notice at a job, I've always stayed the entire two weeks. Just to like wrap up anything I was working on, finish mm -hmm. any, you know, last minute projects. Because, you know, you don't want to burn any bridges, True. you know, in, while you're working. Because you may have to come back. You never know what your circumstance is. So, yeah. um, but I think the next time I may just give them just a week. Put in a two week and then be like, hey, you know, I'm just going to do a week and, and see how that works out. Well, I mean, unless you got to train somebody else, then. Yeah. I think it depends the on the thing? job. Because yeah. I think there's some jobs where I did have to work two weeks and I didn't mind it because I didn't want to just leave them high and dry. Uh, but this job, honestly, I, I've been here five months. We've done nothing for five yeah. months. So I yeah. have no, I, I, I'd leave tomorrow if I could, but I'm driving a company vehicle. So I can't really leave. Oh, you drove <laughs> in the company vehicle tonight? No, it's it's at my my place. Oh, okay, I'm yeah. driving it generally right now, mm -hmm. and it's just it's complicated. It's a long story that doesn't matter. So anyway, well, that's my week. So you got a job, something you love, raise. 
Oh my god, yo, the raise is crazy. That's amazing. Uh, I'm getting a 40k pay bump from what I'm making now. No nice. way. Which is the most significant pay bump I've gotten, and the reason it's important is because I'll say what I did. So I'm leaving an aviation job for a startup company. Good opportunity, but things are moving slow, and I wasn't looking for a new job, but something just happened to fall in my lap via LinkedIn. Uh, social media. Social media. So, social, social media, which, ooh, good topic. Um, maybe I should have saved that for later. Um, <laughs> but long story short, someone reached out to me about a job. Um, I've been doing photography freelance for about two years um, during the pandemic. We loved it, but it got really uh, hard to maintain doing it myself, not being employed by someone, but doing contract work. So I ended up taking a job, but I'm now getting a job that's back in photography, but it's with a company, a well-established company. And it's going to be very stable and pay very well. So Awesome. Yeah, I better myself and I want it. just took two years. We are yeah. excited for you, and we, we can't wait to hear about this journey with this new company. Yes. Absolutely. When one of the Let Me Finish team celebrates, all of us celebrate. Yep. We all win. We all win. But we I'll all get a 40K bump. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we all? More money for speech <laughs> therapy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my weekend was pretty cool. Um, not much of too much was going on. Of course, I had volleyball on Fridays. That takes up a lot of my time. And then Saturday, I just ran some errands. And then that night, I went to a game night with um, some friends that I played volleyball with. And we had a great time. Always a good time. Um, I was a, I was the only black guy there, so I definitely was was the token. Yeah. But that that can get awkward sometimes. Been there. Why? I don't know, like... That's a whole nother... Sometimes you, you may not laugh at all the jokes that they make, and they may not understand the jokes that you make or the references that, you know, each other have, but, you know, I think I know this group of people so well that it just it's never an issue or it's never awkward or I don't allow it to get that way. Um, so, yeah, we just played some card games, and we had a good night, had some drinks, had some food. We, we It was a lot of fun. Um, Sunday... We uh, just kind of chilled at the house, cleaned up, and then we went out that evening, had a little, you know, get ready for Monday drink, um, and then came home and Where just, was it at? just chilled. Um, Deep Ellum. Deep Ellum, yeah. on the record? Went to On Premise. On Premise, that's what I meant. Yeah. Um, who all went? Me, Memphis, Nancy, <laughs> and then uh, some of uh, his friends. You, Memphis, Uganda, and some of, <laughs> <laughs> and some of Memphis's friends. Uganda. Yeah. Yeah, we had a good time. It was, it was, we, we had a blast. So, Greg, what, what about you? How was your weekend? Oh, so my weekend kind of started early. I flew to Chicago um, basically Thursday morning, spent the night, left Friday morning. And it was for a work event. Usually when I go on work events, there's sales, there's a booth. It's kind of corny and cheesy. But this was like a client party, you know? So mm -hmm. it was just like open bar, three hours, just mixing it up. And I really do like my job. I like my coworkers. You know, it's a Mexican-based company, IT service provider. Um, so they're all really interesting, genius people, like basically from Mexico. And then there's a few gringos like me. But um, <laughs> it's cool just to get out of the city and just hang out with some people that aren't, you know, from your neck of the woods. Um, yeah. I really do enjoy my coworkers. But I got back exhausted on Friday. And uh, because of the storm, of course, it stormed in Dallas on Thursday night. A lot of people lost power. Like, yeah. I didn't have internet most of the weekend, so. Wow. Okay. Let's believe I was watching TV on my phone. Um, <laughs> you didn't see RuPaul. I watched it on my phone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like, three seconds away after it <laughs> Um yeah, and then the rest of the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, was just fam time. I don't know. I feel like we've been kind of going hard these last couple weekends. So, um, literally Saturday, did stuff with my mom's side of the family. My cousin's about to have twins. He's a missionary, about to go to Peru. Oh, and then, nice. Yeah, Sunday, um, went and hung out with my dad's side of the family, and then didn't do anything. It was so nice. But I did miss my friends. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you need those weekends sometimes to have a remove from your friends because yeah. you appreciate them more. Yeah, you know, hundred <clears throat> percent. Yeah, it, it gives us a chance to reset. And now, I'm happy to see y'all today. We'll get into the topic of social media. First of all, what do you, what are you guys' overall thoughts on social media? Do you like it? Do you hate it? How do you feel? It connects us in an unprecedented way. It's ways for 
people that think they're alone in their maybe, you know, weird interests or obsession or hobby or something um, to connect with other like-minded people. It's a great way to get news. Um, it's a great for memes, you know, like it's like, imagine the amount of just joy and laughter we had from social media yeah. in the last five years. Like, it's like, there's funny ass shit that you'll never see. <laughs> and then there's funny shit that everyone sees, you know, yeah. it's just like the internet is, or well, I'm now I'm just talking about the internet, but social media in particular, like is just this weird, wonderful world, but also it's like toxic yeah. and it brings out 100%. the worst in people and it's um <laughs> making people like that endorphin high or whatever from just like refreshing 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 yep. like i think it's sucking a lot of the joy out of like real life it's addictive yeah for sure um i have like a love and hate relationship when it comes to social media i definitely use it i try not to use it as much as i used to um and i also like to pick what I'm present on on social media um, it has connected me to a lot of family that you know I don't get to talk to on a regular basis or a lot of friends that you know say I went to high school with I can reconnect with them um, and I get to select what I'm posting on social media and I get to select how much you know I want people to know about what's going on in my life I'm able to control that um, so definitely have a love and hate relationship with social media um, overall. I would say uh, for me, I have like a, it's like a double edged sword for me. Um, there's beauty in it as far as information. Like, you know, TikTok is obviously something that's really hot right now for multiple reasons, but it's also hot as far as, you know, it being banned. I, you know, initially TikTok came out, people just thought, oh, people are dancing and doing weird videos, but when I was heavy on social media, which I've taken kind of a break from recently, but when I was heavy on it, I found it really nice to find a good algorithm of informative things. Um, you know, how to's, how to do this, how to cook, uh, workout tips. Um, you know, <clears throat> that's the thing about social media. It can be good or bad. It's really, it's really your control, but you have to know how to navigate it. And I think what's interesting about it is that there's such a divide in technology now where some yeah. people are in it, they know how to use it. And I think about my parents who literally don't understand any of it. Mm -hmm. To them, it's probably the worst thing because they see the bad side of it. So it's really, social media is interesting. It's, it's what you make of it. Yeah, um, I've tried to make it um, good for myself because I'm very careful about the content I consume. Yeah. Um, so it's a weird place. And speaking of social media, that's how I kind of got my recent job. Um, like LinkedIn, for example, is technically a social media app. It is. For professionals. Um, granted, sometimes you're on there and you see things that dwell on the form of Facebook-ish, commenting, arguing, but it doesn't happen a lot. But, you know, I keep an active profile there because I know that there's a purpose that's positive for that. You know, engagement, networking, meeting people. So it's a double-edged sword. It's good if you make it good, but it can be very bad. It can be addictive. It can, you know, be a wormhole for... Um, you know, conspiracy theorists, those type of things. It's it's everything all in once, and it's hard to manage. Yeah, LinkedIn is is what Facebook thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's not for professionals. Not for professionals. Yeah. yeah. What um what arguments have you seen on LinkedIn? You know what it is? Um, it's like the pro cover letter and the anti cover letter. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's, it's every now and again on LinkedIn you'll see someone post something and maybe it could be in favor of a political party or something they agree or disagree with. And it's usually someone commenting on the other side of that argument. And not that it's all politics, but it's usually just a belief that someone's posting. And I just think it's in the nature of a lot of people to argue and they don't realize it, that they're kind of programmed to do that. But a lot of people like to argue and yeah, that's some people's way of engaging online. So that is, that's the type of stuff I see only, I don't see it a lot, but every now and again, I'll see something and it just feels like this is not the place for that. This is not Facebook. <laughs> so, um, but for the most part, that's been the least problematic social media site I've been on. But also so, you ain't just like checking on LinkedIn to look at the feed, like, yeah, right. it's everything. not like a entertainment app. Yeah, you're looking for you're there looking for something. Yeah. I use it for sales. I'm trying to like get, get through leads. people. Yeah. yeah, 
Um, I did get hit on somebody. Somebody did hit on me in my DMs on LinkedIn one time. You no know. way, that's wild. On LinkedIn, yeah, it was weird. It was a custom. I worked at a retail store doing tech support, and the guy friended me and asked me out on a date on LinkedIn. The message is still in my DMs, and it was interesting. The lowest form of thirst <laughs> is <laughs> like Searching looking at LinkedIn because there have been times where I've been like <laughs> wanted to like friend or I have friended people that I was just like, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> it's look, you look good in the suit. <laughs> it's, it's that like low key smart. Like there's it's, a lot of like you know smart, intelligent, wealthy, so to speak, they're people employed. on LinkedIn. You know you can look at their job history. You can look you know, what wow. they're all about. I mean, I wonder if that's a platform that people use to target people that they want to communicate with in that way. What that I, is very interesting. Yeah, what I would <clears throat> what I would think is that maybe someone would use it not to necessarily message them on LinkedIn, but let's say if their LinkedIn is public like mine is, mm-hmm. maybe you look through and see what is their employment history. Okay, he, you know, here's, he went to school, he or she went to school, mm-hmm. or they are currently employed by such and such. Okay, they have a good history of employment. Maybe it's a source. I'm thinking the positive. To get more information. But yeah. you got to think about the fact that People be lying on dating apps, <laughs> yeah. But people be really lying on LinkedIn. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And if I go on the first date and they're like, uh, "From 2012 to 2015, it looks like you worked at um, Active Network. What was that like?" Uh, <laughs> damn, I think that'd be a level of stalkerish that I would not be okay with. You know, do you all yeah. remember years ago when I think it, at the beginning of the pandemic, Toys R Us went out of business, like they closed down. And then people were saying like, oh, snap, I'm going to go on my LinkedIn and put that I was like an executive manager for Tours R Us. They'll That's never smart. be able to confirm that. That's so smart. That's crazy. But that people, people will find a platform to lie on. Okay. People be scamming. <laughs> people be scamming. And that, I think, really brings us to like the Instagram of it all. Yeah. Which is, I mean, you nailed it on the head when you said... You get to show the world what you want to show. And yeah. you don't show, you know, what you don't want to show. And that's... Oftentimes, people are showing the best, greatest moments of their life, you know? Yeah. Um, and I've always said that if you want to get over somebody fast, just look at their tag pictures on Instagram. <laughs> because if you go to their main feed, Ooh. it's always their like yeah. their best pictures. It's what they, they pick want to pictures. put out in the world. But you see the tag pictures, and it's like the blurry, blinked, like... Eyes closed. Double yeah. chin you shit. You could try to go to my tag pictures. I have removed myself from, from pictures I don't want to I have two. In. Yeah, so have I. Yes, I'm looking at mine now. <laughs> Let me just know. check and make sure. That you yeah. see what, They're what not cute. It's not you. It's not the essence of you you're trying to put out in the world. Actually, half of them aren't even me. It's like events and places I was at. <laughs> so what would you say you guys' favorite social... If you had to pick one, what's your favorite platform and why is it your favorite platform? Well, right. Twitter's mine. Or it was for a time where it was just like, this is where I was like going for laughs and this is where I was going for news and discourse mm-hmm. and like... They were up on all the, tr- you know, because there's kind of a lag with like, I don't know, maybe TikTok and Instagram, but like, there's commentary immediately. Like, oh yeah, yeah. If you're watching the Super Bowl, like commentary immediately, like, like any like live event, like anything that happens, <clears throat> like, um, but I, lately my Twitter just kind of seems like kind of wastelandy, like where you're yeah. just like, I need to make it like a mass and follow. Um, clean it up a little bit because it's very like listicles. It's like if you want to see your year completely <laughs> change in one year, these are the five things you should do. And they like comment on each one, so you look at them, and it's like I'm always like, hmm, okay. <laughs> but it's always like get eight hours of sleep a day, uh, drink lots of water. Um, your Twitter you is so boring. Yeah. It's that's it's so good. that's what I'm saying. Bad. It used to be like funny and edgy and stuff, and then it's just like the algorithm takes you somewhere different. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. and like kind of a sad place. <laughs> I would say my favorite is also right now Twitter. I've been on Twitter for a while. Twitter is very entertaining if you know how to use the platform. Mm. I know people get on Twitter and be like, I don't understand this. This is so confusing. You don't actually get a good Twitter feed until you start to follow people that are going to post and like interesting information. Black Twitter is undefeated. I love everything about Black Twitter. It is so hilarious. We just understand what's funny and why something is funny. And the feeds that I just get caught in sometimes are just like, you know, just hilarious. So I really enjoy Twitter and that is probably my favorite current, you know, social media platform. 
All right, so <clears throat> I think we're going to go three for three because Twitter is also my favorite platform. Wow, okay. So what's funny about Twitter for me is like I don't follow anybody I know. By the way, I follow your page because when you yeah, say yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Not because <laughs> you, but... Oh, uh, yeah. We both call Dom, Dom's a... Uh, okay. Well, okay. His so, alter, so I his have finsta. an alternate... Yeah, I do have a fence. No, not a fence. It's not a fence. It's, it's a fence for Twitter. Ooh. I have an alternate Twitter page to where, you know, you, it's, it's a little more interesting than, you know, my main Twitter page. And... You know, I think everybody should have one. A hundred percent, I think everybody I one. should have one. Just, I think you need just to have be, one. Yeah, I think I think you it would make your your Twitter. Well, yeah, I did. I mean, I had a porn. We can say it. I had a porn, porn Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. yeah, that's what. Yeah, but um, I got rid of it because that that. It's addictive. Yeah, it's addictive, and it takes you down some weird things where you're like, "Am I into that now?" <laughs> yeah, you know, I found some weird stuff on there. But Pornhub don't doesn't doesn't do that to me. Like it's no, just like my go to. But Twitter is like you just keep going to new pages, and then all of a sudden you're like, <laughs> mm, where am I? "What did I just get off to?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I don't know it. It started off as that, like, oh, this is going to be a porn Twitter, like, the Twitter that I you know like and look at, you know, that type of stuff on Twitter because you can do that on Twitter. But it kind of turned into me just interacting with more of my followers now on Twitter. Like, I actually follow people on that Twitter page that they are pretty cool and decent people, and they're very funny. So, it's not, my Twitter isn't that sexual anymore. I don't post anything myself, but, you know, I don't really like anything that's sexual if you go look at that particular Twitter page that I will not put out there. I used to retweet. Yeah, I used to yeah. retweet a lot more, but I, I don't really. I, if I, I just, retweet something, it's probably something funny. I mean, um, just if you ever happen to find Dom's alt Twitter, just go to his likes page. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's gotten me through many of a cold <laughs> night. I don't I don't want anybody to see my likes page. So that, that's I, I, I wish you could. I wish there was a way you could hide your likes, yeah, but I don't like. It's that. definitely not a thing. So your favorite is Twitter as well. Yeah, so I have my regular Twitter account, and then I do have my porn Twitter. Um, I like Twitter because, one, I don't follow anybody I actually know. Right. Um, so to me, it's a clean palette, right? Right. And I have a good algorithm. I've you know Over years, I've found people who are funny, engaging to follow. People who post on Twitter regularly have good comments, and that's what makes it fun and entertaining for me. Yeah. Um, I've actually muted a lot of words on Twitter because I figured out you can mute words. Mm -hmm. Like what words? Um, honestly, a lot of them are political. So especially during the elections, like mm. um, I'm not one sided in either way. Like I'll mute GOP, D Dems, DM, all of it because during those times, it's just such. I hate the way people talk about politics online. Yeah. I just don't want to see it. So I, I've muted Trump, Biden, all of it. So I don't see those words. Those words are in a tweet that I don't see them. Wow. That has made my experience so much better. So I love Twitter because of the control of it. Yeah. Uh, I like having my regular Twitter for fun. I like having my dirty Twitter for when I have those moments. Mm -hmm. Funny thing about my dirty Twitter is literally I'll sign in just for the sake of looking at it. But when I'm done, I will log out of it so it doesn't stay on my phone. But it's easy to log back into. But it doesn't stay on my phone permanently. I keep yeah. it separate you can't open that in public oh okay. yeah so that that's also why it's like i don't i don't ever want to be in a position where i accidentally open it up and some <laughs> video starts playing and yeah i'm at work and it's that's like all, happens. all you hear is you know <laughs> so no twitter's been great um funny thing the other thing is i just got back on instagram so on instagram i have like my regular personal page and i have my photography page I was on my photography page but i just got back on my personal page and the funny thing i did and because it was making me it was giving me a lot of anxiety because I, what I realized, I didn't like the content I was seeing. Honestly, the people I was following, who some people I knew, some people I didn't really know, I met just through social gatherings the last couple of years, and a lot of them were connected to my ex. I unfollowed 500 people this past weekend. That's crazy. Wow. I unfollowed so many people. Twitter, uh, Instagram said, hey, can you chill out for a little bit? You need like a wait a day. So it took me two days to unfollow about 500 people that, as I was going through it, I'm like, I don't care about what this person posts. Yeah, yeah. Um, they said you've reached your limit for no, they following stopped. people? It kept giving me pop-ups. It's like, hey, you have too much activity. You need to kind of like chill out. <laughs> so like, like, hey, you seem like a bitter bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I kept hitting on follow. It was like, mm, come back tomorrow. So, But it's made my experience better because, um, like I mentioned earlier, I have to be, I've gotten to a point where I have to be very intentional about the content I consume. Yeah. And I just, all the stuff and all the things that, a lot of things have given me anxiety lately, so I have to be cognizant of it and say, hey, I need to remove that. So I've either unfollowed or muted. So that has also made my uh, Instagram experience better because I really hated it for a while. Well, do you guys have any platforms that you don't like? 
Facebook. I was gonna ask. That was gonna be my follow up question. Who's mm -hmm. who's still on Facebook? I, I'm still on Facebook. I don't post on my Facebook. I normally just interact with like family. So if you go to my page, I probably haven't really posted at all, really. But I always interact with my family on there because my family, like you know, my mom is on Facebook, my my dad, my cousin, my all grandma the, is on Facebook. All the old people. Yeah. So I and I have some friends on there that I you know from high school that I will interact with. Um, but yeah, I don't really, Facebook is not one that I typically go to. I wouldn't say I dislike it. My dislike is probably TikTok. Hmm. And I dislike it for like two reasons. Like I did like, I dislike TikTok because it is very addicting. Hmm. Like TikTok, you just get, go through a rabbit hole of just like scrolling through videos, scrolling through videos. And it, you can you start at seven o'clock, and the next thing you know, it's eleven o'clock at night, and you've been just doing nothing but laying in bed, scrolling on TikTok. And oh yeah, many a night has been like, oh my god, how did, how is it midnight? How, did, how is it midnight? And I've just been <laughs> laying here. I haven't been productive at all, just scrolling on TikTok. So that I I don't like how addicting TikTok is, <laughs> and also about TikTok, I just I just don't like. I don't know how to put this. Like, everybody wants to share their experience. Everybody is a, a few review, reviewer. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to, like, go to restaurants and record and be like, I just ate at this restaurant and my service was trash. And, like, I feel like they use the platform to inform people of the wrong reasons sometimes, you know. And, and I don't really like that. I, if you're using the platform for for a good reason, but everybody wants to be an influencer, everybody wants to be a vlogger, everybody wants to, you know, and I, I don't think that they're all doing it for the right reasons. So, and I think you see that a lot on TikTok. Well, see, that's the interesting part about social media, that it's given a lot of people access um, to do things that they normally wouldn't have had. So that's like the double-edged sword. Yeah. Like, there's some people that are, like, using it for great things, making great content, but there are some people that, like you said, are using it for the wrong reason. So that's where I get conflicted because there's good and bad in both of it, but it's like, you know, how do you separate the two and, you know, manage it? Um, I don't have TikTok, TikTok on my phone because that is addictive. Yeah. Um, granted, when I did use it, I, I actually did uh, cultivate a pretty decent algorithm of things that I liked. Mm -hmm. A lot of cat videos, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm that guy. Just <laughs> Welcome but, to Antonio's Cat Corner. <laughs> I got to mention the cat at some point. I have, Every so, episode. Many, I have so many cat videos. In my, <laughs> even in my reels on Instagram. But, you know, I did cultivate a pretty decent uh algorithm that I liked but like you said even with that even with the positive things the how to's the learning stuff the meal prepping it's that's still addictive you're swiping you're liking things I'm gonna go back to that I never go back to it I have all these things bookmarked of how to make this meal or whatever and yeah same thing I've been in bed it's 12 at midnight and I'm like I lay down at 10 o'clock and I'm not asleep and so yeah so that's the one you don't like no it's Facebook Facebook oh yeah Facebook no nah, Facebook just trash it's 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 like, to me, it's for old people. It's for like the people who just figured out social media. I hate the user interface. It's the, it doesn't make, Facebook doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense as far as finding information, the grid. And the other thing is there's so many ads now. The last time I was on Facebook, I felt like I saw 80% ads and 20% of people I actually wanted to see. <laughs> and, it's, and it's constantly clicking, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this. And you like one thing and it just throws you 20 different ads. So I think that the ad thing has gotten really bad. And I, yeah. that's half my issue with social media now. There's so many ads. And I get it. It's for revenue, money. But it's killed the experience for me. So Facebook is the the pits. Well, I got off as someone who got off Facebook in like 2013 and like literally never missed it again. Never looked back. Never, <laughs> thought, of it, never thought about it again. The only time I'm like really kind of <laughs> want it is I'm, I'm missing out on sweet, sweet deals with Facebook. Marketplace. Oh, oh, that's the only yeah. thing. That is the one yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just like Facebook was the first time, you know, Facebook was that girl back in the day, you know? <laughs> and this was the time when we were like in college, right? It was, we were like right around like senior year, probably like yeah, junior year. Yeah, because they but. said, they told us that you weren't able to get a Facebook account unless, unless you were a college student. So did you guys and have a college email address? Yeah. 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 So it was like, that's what it was catered towards. I don't know at one point that changed and 
now high schoolers were on there, your parents were on there. I don't understand. It was, yeah, and it was right around college, I think, like, yeah. maybe my junior year, and it was just, like, everybody started being on it. Yeah. And it was just this, like, crazy sensation. And, of course, it was it's a sensation that we've all gotten used to, which is just, like, there's no segmentation in your life. <laughs> like, your Sunday school teacher and your fucking, <laughs> you know, like, party buddies and your grandma and your... And they're just all seeing the same content. Yes, it's <laughs> They're seeing crazy. all... I cannot tell you how many times, like, people from my... You know, because I come from kind of a a town where, like, religion, you know, Christianity is big. Yeah. Um, and just people that were, like... Pulling me aside, like disappointed in me, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like really worried about me. Based on something they saw on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. like me doing Crazy. like a like a beer keg stand or something, <laughs> like literally. And but that was the like powerlessness you felt where Saturday, you know, morning you could have some pictures posted of yourself. Like yep. I remember one time in college, I had passed out. Like this was freshman year in the dorms. And they did that thing where they like drew all over my body, you know, like a dick on my face. And like, they even like kind of duct taped my hands and like legs together. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was kind of rough. You were hazed. Somebody, and then they just like posted on there and somebody's like, you know, from my hometown's like, oh my yeah, God. I saw that. And it's just like, it was this weird powerlessness where it was like, nothing is private. And also these people that you're like different versions of. Like, you go to, you know, you kind of do the code switching thing. Like, you're different at work. You're different yep. with your friends. You're different with your family. It was just, like, where this flattened thing where, like, they were all colliding into each other. So, like, I I always hated Facebook for that reason. Um, you know, also, you know, the element of sexuality. I mean, on yeah. social media, yeah. it's kind of difficult. And I don't think any of us have, like, done the thing where we've said... This is who I am, oh, no. you know, like we've no, all kind of like not. skirted the edges of being like year by year a little bit more comfortable with it. <laughs> but, like, something, yeah, but, but the whole control aspect of it for us, it is it's, it is always a consideration of like, is this too? Yeah. Just like I've untagged myself uh, in pictures on Instagram, I've untagged myself in more posts mm -hmm. on Facebook. <laughs> because on Facebook, you, it's just like a limited number of people you can tag in, a, in, a, in an album of pictures. And I don't know what I'm being tagged in, so... Yeah, I've, I've, you know, it's hard to keep that separation too, you know, with your family. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Facebook, but, you know, probably not the one I dislike. Yeah, and I think the thing about Facebook that got weird is that, um, like you said, you had, initially it was like your close friends, and then as it got bigger, you noticed it just came the random, oh, I met someone at a bar hanging out, or I talked to someone for five minutes at a party, or whatever and it's like oh we should friend each other and yeah. that's where i think it went wrong because it became less intimate you're starting to friend these random people you don't yeah. know oh we have the same last name uh, that Sir, happened yeah there were groups <laughs> you're right. facebook groups yeah i literally was in a group of bonners antonio bonners i'm like why why am i in this group i don't care about yeah, what I is the origin of bonner were they i have no idea irish I have no it idea. sounds like irish that should be your know, like actually you should do your introduction with an Irish lilt next time. I, we should I, all do I, our 20, 23 and these. You know Is that what, what it's called? Uh, that's one, but there's also African ancestry for us because oh, that oh, goes deeper. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I've done it. Um, the African one? <laughs> no, yeah, I did. I'm zero point. I'm actually negative African somehow. <laughs> no, no, apparently, if we're all from Africa, nobody's negative African. We all have a little African. Yeah. Just a little. Yeah, yeah I just had like a. Some. Point zero 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 one, I think. So from, are from Nigeria though. <laughs> <laughs> so are there any like social media platforms you know that aren't very popular or went away that you wish would come back? Mm, good question. Uh, I have some. I have some like, good ones. What, like what's went that? Away. Tumblr. Tumblr. Oh, Tumblr. I never went, went down that. away. But I used to be on Tumblr huge. My Tumblr page was. You know something, something to Explain live for. Explain it Tumblr to me, because it seemed like you just like posted pictures. It was a blog. It was your own personal blog. Of Tumblr would ask you things that you're interested in, and you would come across different people posting pictures of those things or of those people. 
it was just a way for you to meet people and see their interests on their blogs. But it was it was very cool. Tumblr was a, a time. <laughs> it was, yeah, no. It was a big thing for for a lot of people. So Tumblr's one I would uh, bring back into popularity. Tumblr went away because they didn't allow you to post nudes anymore or like porn. A lot of people left Tumblr because you couldn't post porn on there. Well, that anymore. was the problem with Tumblr. It it didn't start off that way, but mm-hmm. porn took over. Yeah, and you could not see porn. <laughs> so I loved Tumblr porn. It was amazing, but you couldn't. It just once you couldn't escape it. It yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> kind of like Twitter is kind of becoming a little bit. I feel sad that I missed the Tumblr wave. Oh it was yeah, fun. you it missed you missed Tumblr. It was a time and a place. It was a yeah. time, and I missed MySpace too. MySpace was well. That was the did we miss it? That, that was that girl. First. That was the first thing. I liked MySpace because <laughs> it was Facebook became so like corporate and big and like the model. It was like the Walmart of social media. Yes, yeah. and it felt like MySpace was kind of like the Fiesta. Or yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> it had all the shit you needed. It was just a less. Bright fluorescent light, and you know a lot of music, right? Yes. And I love it. Fiesta is a Hispanic grocery store in Texas. Yes, for people for, who may not be in Texas, who may not know. Yeah, but um, MySpace is where we all became coders. Mm-hmm. Everybody was a coder on MySpace because we you had to change your background. People did some creative things to their MySpace pages. You'll go to their MySpace pages, their letters flipping upside down. You got matrix letters in the background. The matrix letters. And they had to like go into the program and code those <laughs> so it would show up on their MySpace page. These kids got very <laughs> creative. You know, I wasn't that creative with my MySpace, but I liked MySpace for two reasons. When you went to somebody's MySpace page, the song that that was playing on their on their page told you a lot about who that person was. That was and being able to to show people when I was mad at them by taking them out of my top five or uh, top six. I think it was top the eight. Top, the top eight was that was so that fun. was that, that was, was a, that was an exciting time. And it time. was like the ordering of it was important. Yeah. Yes. And the, but then you got around to like seven and eight. And you're like, I don't have this many friends. <laughs> and then you yeah, have it. And then that many like good friends. <laughs> and then if you wanted to get real controversial, you do a top three, top four. Oh yeah. And then it's like you cut out Everybody. four four other people that used to be there. And <laughs> I kind of outed myself with the top eight list because I had like the person I was dating when I was like super not really out, and they were like, "Who is this person?" <laughs> None of my friends knew. Why is he number one? And I kind of outed myself from MySpace a little bit. See? Bold. Yeah, fun times. But yeah, MySpace was fun. MySpace uh, was fun. It was so creative. And it was creative. And I feel like it was just like more art- artistic. Like you had a lot more of the emo pics yeah. of you like not ma- not looking and smiling at the camera. Like looking away and like looking kind of moody. A lot of mirror pics. A lot, a lot of mirror of, pics. We all had mirror pics. In the bathroom somewhere. <laughs> With our razors. What a time. Well, I never had the razor. I was poor. Uh, Another one I would bring back awesome. is um, Vine. Vine was fun. Vine was funny. I had I had friends in college who were creators on Vine, and they would just make the funniest content. And I think Vine was better than TikTok because Vine was like, we're going to give y'all 20 seconds, 30 seconds on a video, and that's it. Um, so Vine was, Vine was fun. It was I, funny. I give people very much um, kudos for being funny in six seconds. I think. <laughs> I mean, to think, like, I'm going to film this in six seconds and be funny was kind of crazy. Yep. I never really watched a lot of Vines, but obviously most of those clips got posted on the site, so I would see them there, and it's kind of cool to, you know what's cool about Vine? It's cool to see the people that started on Vine who are, like, 10 years later, it's, like, le- legit doing real work. Yep. Um, like, you guys watch Abbott Elementary? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know if she started on Vine, but she was social media, uh, Quinta Brunson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To see her go from that to like having a full ass show on ABC, just like winning awards, and it's actually funny. It's kind of crazy. So, speaking of Quinta, um, do we count YouTube as a social media platform? Mm. Not <sighs> kind of. I because I was even thinking about like Spotify, how you can like have friends and stuff. That's not really a social you can media. have friends on Spotify. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm friends with Greg. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, you have a top eight. No, <laughs> oh. <laughs> let me go on there. YouTube is interesting. I... I feel like YouTube not, is kind of a social media, but, but not, not everybody. But, I mean, mo- part of it. most people don't. I mean, do you post videos on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. 
Like you drone do? videos. So. What video? Drone videos. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like for advertisement for myself. Yeah, oh, well, my, know my music, my album is on YouTube. That's not a plug, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio Barner Photography. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Generic Jones. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about that. I was like, I wonder if YouTube would count as a social media platform. It is a form of, yeah, or it's just that's just a platform. It's more of a content platform. I wouldn't call it social media, even though it ties into it where people post mm -hmm. YouTube clips. But I guess I think in the sense that we're referring to social media as places where you have profiles and you engage on a regular basis or you follow content. I, I, it, you know, it's funny. It kind of is. It almost is, though. Almost, yeah. Because, like, I have Twitter. I don't engage on Twitter at all. Like, I like stuff. I follow. But I don't, like, comment. But I do the same thing on YouTube. I like. I follow. Mm -hmm. I subscribe. I don't comment on anybody's stuff on YouTube. But I just watch it. So, huh. It's kind of interesting. There's been a couple of videos I commented on on YouTube. <laughs> I've never commented on a video. <laughs> For who? I can't remember what it was. If I could remember, I would let you know. I'm going to look it up. But I have posted some comments on, on some videos. Wait, who who's your favorite artist? Isn't it Ari Lennox? Ari Lennox? Uh, Ari Lennox? He I like Ari Lennox. I, I mean, he you said know, she overrated. That's a topic for another day. We're not going to get into that right now. He I said, was just imagining you like commenting work or something. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's you funny. said she got to perform at a carnival or something like that. Okay, <laughs> chill out. <That's> definitely, <laughs> that definitely was a conversation, but not a conversation we want to have right now for sure. We're gonna bring it back up one day though. Lord. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's um, um, our season finale. There's enough great content and apps. It's all what you make of it and how you use it. Oh, for sure. Um, like I said, me, like going back to my Instagram, me unfollowing so many people was to cleanse my palate of the things I was seeing. Also to get people out my DMs, to be honest too, because people be thirsty and uh, they don't take, they don't read lack of response well. Um, but it's all how you manage it. I think the platforms are pretty good as is. I mean, there's no perfect platform. No. Any idea you're just copying something that already exists. And I've seen so many copycat apps try to rise up and they just all feel like other versions of what exists. So I don't know. I don't really have any perfect social media app. People suck. And that's what makes social media suck. Wow, that was negative. Sorry. <laughs> No, it's true. It brings out the worst in human behavior and the best of human behavior. Yeah, because the platforms are good. It's just people use them in a way that kind of diminishes the purpose of apps. So that's the problem with people. So Yeah, and it, it mm -hmm. also is a problem with like popularity, too. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish that I was comfortable with sharing more, posting more pictures, or telling people about more. I think that's just me just being a private person. That's just how I am. I, don't, I post two times a year. You Same. Really yeah, I never post, post on me. Yeah, when my your last post actually. My birthday and maybe just like New Year's or like Halloween or some type of activity I'm doing, I'll post on there. But sometimes I just don't feel comfortable always posting, you know. Or times that you do page. post a lot and you're just like you feel that weird yeah. like exposure and yeah, you're like yeah. I don't really want to put myself out like that. I don't need people seeing this. Oh, you were, oh no, so, you're yeah. I, I I normally especially Instagram I normally just post like once or twice a year. You know, I don't really do too much on there just because i was like i'm not i don't feel like i'm that interesting that people want to see me and and sometimes it brings some attention you may not always want that part too. but sometimes it brings some attention you you do need want. yeah uh, yeah well yeah. you know when yeah. i when i like bought the house when i bought the, you know when i bought the house hey daddy um yeah i got a lot of hey daddies well look i got a lot of people reaching out you know, mm -hmm. people that like mm -hmm. I thought thought that I wasn't shit, <laughs> and they were like, now. "Wow!" Now you stunting on them because yeah, you know, I'm stunting on them. I got it. Up. By the way, Dom, um, you are you need to post three times this year because you posted one time in 2022, so you are slipping. Wait, look at mine though. 2022 was a rough year, so you know I feel like I only needed to post one time. But I do have a birthday coming up, so it's time. I will be, you know, Damn. it's time. It's it's time Ooh, for you for don't me to post. When's the last time Greg posted? So I'm looking at this photo. This was like 2020. Yeah. Oh, that was before my terrible relationship. All right, Greg's. Ooh, your last post is 2022 in June. 
And then the one before that was in, in April 2021. None of y'all posts. See? Wow. I got y'all We're going to post three times this year, Greg. Damn, okay. I mean, y'all better take it some good pictures. I just this. posted five times in like at brunch this since Saturday. our last podcast. <laughs> yeah. Remember we talked about like, I need to post Yeah, myself? we did. I'm finally, I, I still have things I struggle with is captions. That's my biggest thing, right? You want to have a decent caption. Yeah. Have you guys heard of chat GPT? Yeah. It's amazing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've definitely. Wait, what is it, it called? Is it Chat GPT. Chat GPT. What's yeah. that? Uh, that's we like, don't. Uh, <laughs> that's, like it, it'll like create captions for you. It'll it create more than captions. It. it would write like a novel review if you. Wow. Want. Like, my oh my friend, like a letter it. to your yeah. anybody. Anybody, you'd just be like, say it in the style. Of, so it's like AI. It's AI. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It's fucking amazing. Um, well, my well, friend uses it. This. Yeah. My friend uses it for his work email to send out to his company, and I read it. I'm like that. That sounds professional as hell. Yeah. So long story short, I started to use it for my captions now because, granted, my captions are now a little generic, mm-hmm. but they fit the mode for me to advertise myself. Yeah, 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 Having to think of a caption for every photo is like, I don't have time. And like, what yes. was, give us some captions. Please. All right, so let's look at my recent one. All right, so I asked chat GPT. Come on, T-Mobile, let's go. All right. <laughs> All right, so recently this past weekend, I didn't talk about this. I did a behind the scenes photo video for a realtor and a very popular Dallas photographer. So I told Jack Chat GTP to give me like a caption for a behind the scenes photo shoot for the name of this realty company. There's something special about behind the scenes with the team who truly loves what they do. That's exactly what I experienced with the Nintio Realty Group. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Granted, it's basic. Yeah, but that, doesn't I don't, sound like, uh, that doesn't sound like you, Ed. Oh, I mean, no, it, it, sounds like you have a, it sounds like you have a social media team. Yeah, that's, yeah, without paying for it. So that's like the you beauty have some of intern. it. Wow, do you think these, this is what Brittany, the, the famous... Like, at the end, what? You know what? Yes. That's what famous people use to, so like, yeah. you know, manage now themselves. Or? And how, so what it is, is when I asked it to do it, it didn't. It gave me, like, options to choose from. So it was not just, like, one caption. It spit out options. I just go in and change a couple words, obviously, but... That was damn near verbatim what it told me. And I just copy pasted, added some hashtags. It even gave me hashtags, by the way. I didn't read the hashtags. What are the hashtags? Well, I forgot because I've added my own in there and I tagged people. But like the ones that gave me were Team Love and Grateful, Dallas Real Estate, uh, stuff like that. Hashtag Team Love. Team Love, which I would have never posted that. Yeah. So, yeah, I've actually stepped my social media game up. But like I said, it's because I'm posting intentional things that I like and that suit my need and... Uh, yeah, so I posted five times since our last podcast. So. That is really cool. Wow. I'm, I'm I haven't posted anything. Yeah. So I haven't posted a tweet. I haven't Me posted either. a TikTok. I haven't even bo- re- reposted a story in what feels like months. <laughs> yeah, and I just got back on, so I don't see you guys. So I need I need y'all to step. Well, Don will post a story. I will post it. I definitely will post a story here yeah. and there. With a fresh outfit, you know, a nice t-shirt, his hat on probably, his hairline looking crispy, you know. Maybe that's what I need. New clothes. <laughs> <laughs> a haircut. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> well, does it? Is there anything else we want to touch on? No, I think we touch on every corner of the internet. I, I think, think that so we talk too. about every part of the internet. There's no stone left unturned. I think we've turned over every social media app out yeah. there. Yeah. Well, not dating a, app. That's well, a whole that's another, another episode. Another topic, another. Another episode. Be on the lookout for that. Well, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in to another episode of Let Me Finish, and I hope you all continue to listen.